The following information is from an incomplete and unfinished project I began working on, which I titled Curse of the Cross. This information is not presented with the intention to steer one away from the faith in which he walks. It is intended to provoke thought and critical thinking about the mysteries of this strange place which we exist, Earth. Many aspects of this program are incomplete and trail off. This would be a very large project for me to undertake, and I simply do not have all the time required to make sure that it is done correct. That said, I have sat on this project for about five or six months, perhaps even longer. And I do not know when I will have time to apply myself properly to research things and dive deeper into things and put them together in a contextual flow that makes sense to anyone, the end user, even myself. This world is, in fact, encoded and concealed and hidden and even presented to us in a holographic manner. What we think we see what we experience with our brain is only at a face value level. Those whom have drafted books such as the Holy Bible, the, the Quran, uh, even the Talmud have a great, uh, deep understanding of e esoteric things that the average man simply does not have immediate knowledge of. This information can be found if one has the time to find it and apply himself to it, but it is not immediately available. So when you look at your Bible and you read your Bible, you obviously notice that it's, it, it's all allegory and metaphor and has to be translated by yourself in order to make sense of it. You have to find a way to transliterate it into something which you can relate to all of the faiths based out of so-called Abraham are, are rooted in the same system. When I started getting to the word ion in this, in this production, I, O, and N, I touched base on the in and out, you know, the start again, the re repetition of things, the one to the zero infinitely, and then the N being considered as the Hebrew character Noon. The Hebrew character Noon looks like a man bent down as if in worship or humility or humbleness, while at the same time wearing a crown as though he is a king. This part of the production is very, very fascinating, uh, incredibly fascinating. The Hebrew character Noon, I believe, has a lot to do with things that uh, many people involved in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam probably argue back and forth against on uh, with each other all the time. And yet the root of the message of it is probably the same across all three. All right, and uh, the message, what I gather, is that it, all of these are about some form of sun worship, actual worship of the sun. And the heaven may be to go into the sun. And the fallen angels are angles, of course, that are falling out of the sun, being ejected out of the sun. Uh, there's just so much to this. It, it's profoundly deep and... Um, thought provocative beyond belief that all this all of this said i do apologize for not having the time um to put this together properly and i do hope that somebody will find some form of information out of this and find it find that it makes sense to them and resonates something within their curiosity and you know makes you think deeper and probably take some time yourself and look into some of these things. Uh, the curse of the cross. Uh, as we can see as well, as this program continues, I do trail off out of um, the curse aspect of the cross. Uh, the whole thing is just so tremendously huge that um, 
it starts to steer out of reincarnation over and over and over again. Um, it, it, again, it's very, it is a very perplexing world in which we live, and this is a very complicated subject. And this is why all these books and scrolls and things like that have been drafted and created by Freemasons and things like that. You know, Pythagoras uh, has... Uh, people compare Pythagoras himself to Jesus Christ, and a lot of you Christians may say, oh, blasphemy, you know, of course, right? Because that's the Christian's favorite thing typically to do is label everything as blasphemy. Um, uh, another thing that the Christian loves to do is talk about repent, which on its face means to put back into a pen, uh, to go back into something, you know, into the box, into the body, into the flesh, uh, or however you want to put it, you know, back into the cube, even the time cube of of reality of Saturn. And of course, the the Christian typically immediately thinks that no, repent is about feeling bad, feeling sorry, and. You know, you've done something wrong, and you feel bad about it. And even God had remorse, and he did repent, which doesn't make any sense, of course. And Christianity is, from what I what I continue to gather, and I'm not telling anyone that this is how you are, but it seems to be rooted in misery so often, you know, and shame and remorse and you know, please kill me and the rest of the world because I am such a, a bad man or bad woman. And it's just, it's it's very powerful to have that held against yourself and for other people to hold that against you and for you to even hold that against other people. For surely none of us are any kinds of saints in this fucked up reality. So without further ado... Uh, I, I do again apologize for releasing this so incomplete. This is Chris with the Age of Reason. Hello men, hello women, hello all whom may happen to listen. I present to you for your consideration an incomplete work which I have titled Curse of the Cross. Crucifixion the word is compromised of the words cruci fix ion crucifixion the first part of this spell is cruci cruci is a term used for crux crux is a cross. Crux, as defined in the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 5th edition, is defined as noun, the basic, central, or critical point or feature, a puzzling or apparently insolvable problem a paradigm, a cross. A cross is an X. X is the Roman numeral 10. 10 being the one and the zero, an infinite paradigm where one starts again as defined by Merriam-Webster's dictionary, crux in Latin referred literally to an instrument of torture, often a cross or stake, and figuratively to the torture and misery inflicted by means of such an instrument. The crux torture, the torture of life on earth in the skin 
in the, the body of a kind of man as part of mankind. The infinite resurrection is an infinite torture to be resurrected on earth for the crux at your crossing point of death to be X'd out to come back again surely is a terrifying notion remember that X is 10 1 0 where 1 starts again say 10 becomes very interesting with the definition of crux as a puzzling or apparently insolvable problem. The crux is the paradigm, the paradox, the cross, the crucifix ion is an insolvable puzzle, a paradox. Fix, typically, fix is defined as to repair something. Repair would be to pair something again. Pair a spirit into a body, perhaps. Fix, definitions on the internet. Intransitive verb, trans transient, transferal, intransitive verb, to correct or set right, adjust, to restore to proper condition or working order, repair, fix, could also be thought to mount something in place, as the Christ was fixed upon the X, the 10, he was crucified, he was fixed onto it, crucifix ion, he was paired to the cross, repaired to the X for resurrection back on earth. Remember, the Christ is said to be the Son of God. And we will come back to that in a few moments. Ion. Defined again by the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, 5th edition. Ion. Noun. An atom or group of atoms that has acquired a net electric charge by gaining or losing one or more electrons. L. Elect. Electrons. Noun. An abbreviation of longitude. Longitude. Length. Linear. Stretch of time. Continuing. Noun. In physical chemistry, one of the particles bearing electric charges which carry electric current through the air or other gas. C. Electron. Electron. Elect. L. Ion is rote as an I and an O. The I and the O could look like a one and zero. Again, for the continuing paradox or paradigm duality of off and on 
in and out, etc. Ion could be seen as the characters I, O, and the Hebrew letter Nun. Nun. The 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is called Nun, pronounced Nun, and has the sound of N as in now. The letter Nun is the 14th letter of the alphabet, having the numeric value of 50. The pictograph for Nun looks something like a seed, whereas the classical Hebrew script, Kitav Asherit, is constructed of a bent vav with a crown like a zayin. The Mystery of Noon According to the Hazil sages, Noon is said to represent both faithfulness and the reward for faithfulness. Moses is seen as the paradigmatic humble servant of the Lord. At this point, we will not put a lot more research into the character Noon, but we will take this and keep it in mind. Noon is the place where the sun is highest in the sky. We then return to the thought that Christ is the Son of God. The sun shines brightest and hits the earth and all inhabitants on the earth most at noon, high noon, the highest plateau. The character noon has a crown on it. It is at the highest plateau by the pictographic looks of it, that is to say. Briefly continuing from this website, Yeshua and the letter Nun. In Aramaic, which is the language of the Talmud, the word Nun means fish, a symbol of activity and life. The first mention of the word is in Exodus 33, 11, in reference to Joshua, the son of Nun. Joshua, the one who succeeded Moses and was able to enter the promised land, was the son of life. A clear picture of Yeshua, our Messiah. Notice that the form of the noon represents a bent vav, suggesting a humbled man, crowned with glory, the three tagging at the head of the letter. From the messianic point of view, we see that Yeshua came as a man, Vav, was honored by his absolute humility, his humiliation, while upon earth, as indicated by the crown of thorns, the humiliation, and is now exalted as the righteous one who wears the golden crown of God upon his head forever and ever. Revelation 14. 14. As we approach the next angle on this website, let us keep in mind that the fisher of men are the disciples of the Christ. Christ could thereby be thought of as the fisher king, 
as to fish is to troll or attempt to catch fish or other things and fish itself is an edible animal. Continuing with a passage on this website. The symbol of the fish and Jesus. The symbol of the fish has early roots in Christianity as an emblem of the Messiah, Yeshua. The word for fish in Greek is ichthus, ichthus, which some believe was used as an acronym for the Greek phrase Jesus Christos Theo Oios Soter, or Jesus Christ, the Son of the God Savior. We all know the symbol of the Jesus fish. And this website leads one to believe that the fish has been a symbol of Christianity for much longer than many people acknowledge or realize. For Christ is the King Fisher, the Fisher King, he who fishes for men, mankind. Fish is an edible animal. As an edible animal, fish is a form of sustenance. Sus or sus is another word for fish. How is the word fish defined? At the website for Cambridge Dictionary, fish is defined as follows. Now, an animal with gills and fins that lives in water or the meat of this animal lives in water it is an animal that lives in water it exists in a flow of current Strangely enough, the French translation for fish is poisson. I don't know if I'm articulating that properly, but poisson, poisson, spelled P-O-I-S-S-O-N, very close to the English word poison, P-O-I-S-O-N. Take for that what you will.